picture, but I thanks. I we need to record my <laughs> my overview of garlic ginger. <laughs> so uh, it does look like garlic is gonna gonna win in this one because there's even with the split on ginger garlic, it feels like a few people are leaning garlic way. So <laughs> has anybody gotten into like all the different garlics? I've never, I just kind of use the bulk garlic. Doesn't oh, it my, par my parents do. They, they grow garlic in their garden. Yeah. And my stepdad has a whole system. He's got dozens of varieties and they're, <laughs> they, <laughs> when they harvest them, he color codes them. And then he's got some kind of a sheet that describes like which one's which. And whenever I go to my parents' house, I can't just grab a ball of garlic to do something with. Like someone has to tell me which one I have to use in this particular situation because they are super into it. So if you're cooking it, it's one thing. If you're cooking it in something particular, it's a different kind. And if you're using it in something it wrong, it oil. it's a completely different thing. So like I can't, I can't pick garlic at my parents' house. I have to send someone to find me the appropriate garlic for the situation. <laughs> and you can taste a big difference, can't you? Yeah, you can, because some of them are, are crazy strong, um, depending on what you're using it for. Right. Well, there's our garlic. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I, I put on the agenda. So last in the last agenda, we had kind of not gotten to these metric models that are listed here. And if somebody would like to add another one, feel free. Um, but I, I thought that they were... Um, I, I think some of them are pretty close to being done. And just as part of this metric model working group, I think it's probably good that we continue to think about releasing metric models. We've talked a lot about software and kind of the connection with metric models and software, but I would just like to take a look at a few of these. Um, you get it with respect to just releasing the models themselves. So I'm just going to kind of go through one by one. Some I think should take a little bit uh, more time, some should take a little bit less time. Um, and I'll start with this influence metric model that we have right here. So this was a metric model that um, I think Frank and Shoya had brought forward, if you recall, a while ago. And I think one of the challenges as I went through this, one of the challenges with this metric model was that it was kind of two things. It was influence within a project and influence within an ecosystem. So thinking about how an organization or a person could have an influence on a on a project and how a, um, a particular project could have an influence within an ecosystem. I think that was kind of confounding things. It was creating some confusion because we had two different ideas within one metric model. So I had I, I, I stopped here just kind of at the user stories, but I had kind of thought maybe we could focus this at least this first pass, just on within project influence or influence just within a particular project. And that's how I tried to write this starting point. And then the other thing that I did want to bring up is we do have an old metric that came from years ago before we had metric models. And so that's what this is right here. So just reading this, my suggestion would be to, to take at least what we have from Frank and Shoya and at least start focusing on within project influence. We can think of a different name. Get rid of this as a metric and take the text that we have here. You know what I mean? And incorporate what we have in the description and the objectives into, into this, some of that narrative. Um, and then release within project influence as a metric model itself. So it would remove one metric from our list, create one metric model that would be within project influence. Um, and interesting, not maybe not interestingly, you know, a lot of the things that are listed here are, are actually kind of not a lot, but a few of them are what we capture here as metrics in the metric model anyway. So I'd like to get a little bit of feedback on what you all think about that approach. I think it seems reasonable to me. I mean, looking looking at that one, now that we have a, the concept of a metrics model, 
the organizational influence definitely looks more like a metrics model than than a metric. And so I think I think this is a natural evolution as, as you've described here. Okay. Um, other thoughts? Okay, so what I'll do, um, and what do you think about splitting this metric model that I'm showing on the screen right here into within project influence as one metric model? And then the other part that's in here is like project influence within an ecosystem where we talk about dependencies. And I think those should be two different things. I think we were just getting confused in this model itself. I'm seeing some nods. You're all okay with that? Okay. Yep. Okay. So I'll I'll continue to work on that, um, and I'll bring something cleaner um, to the group in a couple of weeks. And maybe then the last question is: Are you okay with this title, or should we just worry about that in two weeks? Within project influence, we could just worry about it in two weeks. Maybe internal project influence. Like that, yeah. I feel like within might be confusing for people. Yeah, no problem. Or, or is this always going to refer to one project? Could this be like a single project influence and then project influence in an ecosystem is something else? Yeah, exactly. So this would be just like a company's influence within a project mm. as, as an example. And then a different metric model would be how much that one project, <clears throat> excuse me, has influence within a larger ecosystem metric model number two for that second one. Does that answer your question? Gary, good. Yeah, it makes sense. Yep. Okay. Right on. Okay, cool. Um so I'll I'll just work on that a little bit. Okay. Thank you everybody. Um the next one that we had is this one. And so this this was like organizational influence, diversity, activity. It had a variety of different names associated with it. And I tried to write it in such a way that uh, it was a little different than what we just talked about with respect to influence. And so what I was trying to do here was just give you a metric model that would kind of indicate um, how how well you as an organization, for example, would be able to work in a community with others, not necessarily influence it, but be able to join the community and, you know, kind of have an impact and, and contribute to the project as a whole. So that's what I'm trying to show here. And I know that it's probably related to influence, but I was trying to separate the two just a little bit. What do you what do y'all think of this? Again, I just stopped at user stories. I feel like I feel like this is two slightly different things um, because I look at um, activity as something that's different from collaboration. Okay. So several organizations may be active in a project, um, but they, they may or may not be collaborating on something together. Do you see what I mean? I'm not I'm not sure how how the two go together. So do you think activity is a better word here? I don't, yeah. It, well, they're they're both important. I mean, I think it just depends on, on, on what we want to measure. Okay. So Me too. I, 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 yeah, good. Yeah, I agree both you, both of you. Yeah. It's kind of like activity instead of collaboration because there's no uh evidence here 
within this metrics model to show how collaborate between the different organizations. But it's, it do show the activities uh, provided by the different uh, organizations. Bernard, did you have a comment too? Yeah, so I was saying, uh, am I audible because my internet is little unstable today? Far. Yeah, so uh, what I was saying is uh, most of the organization engage with the community, not in terms of like one-on-one uh, -on -one collaboration, but they just keep on doing some activities like a contribution, which is collaboration in a sense to the project, but not like in a what you call it like, okay, we are, you do this part, you do this part, but like, it's like voluntary and they still through activity, they collaborate with the project. Okay, so would you be, would, I think the way this is currently written, it leans towards activity and away from collaboration, looking at it. Right. Okay, so why don't I, Okay, I think that's good. Okay, I can, and again, I, I just stopped here. But I, I think some of these are pretty reasonable in terms of the metrics that are in the, that we propose just around activity. Yeah. So, okay, cool, thank you for that. Thanks for everybody for just kind of walking through these with me because <laughs> these I think these just they've been sitting out here for some months. <laughs> I just needed to do some housekeeping a little bit. All right. I, I, I'm interested in organizational influence and how it relates to the uh, which one? I think it's elephant factor because I think elephant factor is instead of bus factor being if this many contributors left, then fifty percent of contributions would be gone. Um, I noticed that I didn't see the elephant factor in, in this metric model. Do you think that it might fit just for the sake of tracking, um, you know, if this organization left or these three organizations left, then 50% of the commits would be gone? Because it kind of feels like when you're thinking about influence and activity, those things might fit together. If, if you want like a super influence metric, I think that that might be something good to keep in mind. What do other thing other people think? I agree. Okay. Um, Gary, do you think it's for both? Uh, I think it's for if you make an influence specifically, because activity um, activity is aggregated to understand the elephant factor, but to understand the influence of an organization, you want to know whether or not it it contributes meaningfully to the overall picture of how many contributions happen on the project, right? Okay. I was looking, I, one of these models that I had taken a look at this week included elephant factor. And I, I guess I would have thought it was one of these two. Yeah. Um, and it's not here either, is it? In this list, I don't see it here. Okay. Okay. Fair. All right, right on. Uh, thanks, Gary. Okay. Um, any other comments? This is helpful because the the way that Influence had a couple different models in it, I feel like <laughs> this one was also kind of like really proximately close <laughs> to Influence and we were getting, we just needed to separate these. So this is helpful. Thank you. Um, all right. So business readiness of an open source project was one that... I think I had put, I this one seems fairly done to me and it is just kind of sitting here and it hasn't been released. I don't think Elizabeth has this. I didn't actually double check. I don't think it has. Okay. No, it, it was initially originated in the value time, but then it moved on and it has been worked, but I don't think it is released. Okay. 
Do you, do you remember that conversation at all, Vinod? From yeah, this is, yes, this is the one I proposed based on uh, reading from, uh, what was the author name, Witchman or something. The author is in the reference, I guess. Yeah. Uh, there's one author also from which I, I found this idea and I proposed it. I'll add the reference over here from where I got this idea of business readiness. Here's the elephant factor, Gary. <laughs> That's where I saw it. <laughs> um, is this a model that organizations care about? Would this be something that you would take a look at if you're about ready to participate in a project? Yeah, I think this, I think this aligns with some of the discussions we've had in the OSPO working group around um, like assessments of value. Is it value assessments? No, it was a, a, um, basically assessing the viability of a project. I think Gary, those those were kind of the conversations that, that we were having in that OSPO working yeah. group. And it feels like this is similar to that. Um, I'm not, what I'm not sure about is, business readiness as the title, but I also feel like I'm just looking at this for the first time. So maybe I'm, I mean, we could. When I think of business readiness, I think of, um, I think of like, an organization getting something ready to be used in a business context. And this feels a little bit more like, like viability, but it doesn't have all of the stuff we were talking about for viability either. Yeah. So yeah. So it I don't actually... want to derail, I don't want to derail this metric, this metrics model just because there are some other things. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. It was actually originated uh, to assess whether an organization is ready to adopt any particular open source project. So it was originated in that concept that, okay, if I, if I have to pick a particular uh, open source project for adoption in my organization, uh, am, is my organization ready and can I use that in, internally within my project? like within my uh, product line. But if you look at the why it matters, it talks about um, the readiness of the project and not the readiness of the business. Yep. So, so if yeah, you read I, the I, first line- I think line... that this is a much more broad version yes. of what we were talking about in the OSPO working group, which is like, yeah. Not a bad thing. I think that all flavors of yeah. this is it. This is not going. I mean, I'm I'm including. I think one, two, three, four, five, six. Back of my neck, and maybe twenty four metrics in the model that I'm looking at. Uh, like I don't think that it's a bad thing to have different metrics models do varying degrees of of diving into. Yeah. Because you lose a lot of the the succinct that you might want. Um, in viability versus business readiness. Yeah. So no, I, I I agree with that. Sorry. I think I think what I'm not sure about is the title. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's supposed to I I think Vinod, um I'm I'm reading this as pretty similar to a viable product. It's focusing more on like how quickly are you solving problems are there any outstanding license issues that would prevent me from using this in my business? Yes. Um, but I, I want to point out that OSI approved licenses doesn't necessarily mean that you can use it in your business, right? Like every business is going to have different policies. Right. But it's but, like a but, yeah. factor. Mm. Yes, please. Go ahead. It's like a factor that uh, you consider. So if you look open the issue that I posted in the chat, Okay. And that it is, uh, this is where I, I got this idea of this particular model, that like where they are assigning weights to different areas and 
and saying, okay, if overall score increases that, yes, the, uh, this project is ready for us as a, to adopt it. Like if they don't have a licensing policy at all, can I still use it as the viable in my product line? Mm. If, they, if they don't have an active contribution, you know, looking at the project overall health perspective uh, is where this is coming from. Yeah. Mm. So, so I, I, I like this metric model. Um, maybe we should just keep the title as is, given that there, there's some precedent for it in the research and given that none of us seem to be able to come up with something better, because I feel like I want to save the viability um, word for maybe later when uh, maybe we can get something more, more similar to what Gary's been doing with, um, or, you know, several viability models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because when we spoke before, we also have uh, compliance, viability, reliability, uh, and governance, and then community and agility. And I need to find very snappy names for those things and put them together, which I think once I put some time in, we'll emerge. Those names seem pretty snappy. <laughs> you just... I can do better, Matt. I believe in me. <laughs> Hey, I had a question about the business readiness. I, I feel like it's a little bit confusing based on if it's like outside looking in versus is my project ready to open source, which is a whole other thing. And I, I don't know if we need, and maybe it's just me, but that, that's kind of the distinction that I find difficult to make in my own brain with this metric model. But like, which side is it? But it seems like it's more external looking in. Like do, so it's mo mostly around usage, not like releasing it to the world. Does that make yes. sense? Okay. Yes, that is correct. Does anybody else have that like feeling of, oh, I'm getting a little confused with the title or the, the white yeah. matters? Something, yeah. I, I, maybe we could maybe ask. We can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we can add adoption after readiness to say it, it's used for adopt a new um, open source project. Or, or maybe like uh, yeah. yeah or or engagement in another metrics model to say i would like to join the contribution for an open source project yeah i was just going to say the same thing i think this is about adoption of projects and maybe we should just use that word somewhere either in the title or somewhere in the why it matters I think it's more adoption readiness that's what i was going to say adoption readiness i like that better i think yes <laughs> Business adoption readiness. How many words can we spit in there, you think? Or, or maybe even just take business <laughs> out. Like, because it could be anything. It could be an individual also, you know? Do, what do you think? I'm okay with that. I'm curious what Vinod thinks. I'm just thinking uh, even simply readiness of an open source project. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm tempted to throw the word maturity in here, but that's not, I think, what this is for, because you can have projects that are on sliding scale of maturity that a business would adopt for different reasons, right? If you're doing something cutting edge with AI and, and natural language models, then they might not all be as polished as like a React or whatever. Or a Grimoire Lab, you know, that's a very amazing product. I'm just trying to like to me readiness and adoption seems to be uh same word like two words but pointing to the same thing yeah agreed and maybe just adoption Adopt project? adoptability <laughs> 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 yeah maybe the, an maybe. the annie factor <laughs> or maybe open source project adoptability. I don't think that's a word. Is it? Maybe it is. Adoptability. Adoptability is a I'll word. I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, adoptability is a word. Right. Well, capable how about, of being adopted. Maybe Vinod come back with a few options in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I did just add. 
Okay. Uh, at least a few things here, uh, why it matters. Okay. Part that I think at least added adoption. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you can give me the action item. I can go through it and like add references where it, the original idea was generated and I can add the words to it. And maybe just, maybe when, yeah. I, when you come up with a few suggestions for the titles, maybe just put it in the Slack channel. We can sort okay. it out. Okay. Okay. So it does sound like the model itself seems pretty good to go. I didn't hear any real concerns other than the title. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, thank you everybody for going through these with me. Um, all right, we have one called Community Fatigue. I don't, I'm guessing this is just like a trying to identify projects that are running out of steam is what it is. I'm curious what people think about this one. This one, I think, might know what I was like. Uh, I'm not sure I love this one, is what I put in my notes. Give me a second to read it, because I'm worried about it being a little overbroad. Yep, fair enough. I think maybe one of my challenges was I didn't quite understand how the metrics in the model indicate fatigue, like how elephant factor <laughs> indicates fatigue or bus factor indicates fatigue. Um, there was I also feel like this. So when I, so I don't know. Um, let me let me just talk for a second. Um, I think that. I'm just going to talk about in the context of burnout because that's the context I normally talk about it. Maintainer burnout is a real problem right now um, um, in, in loads of projects. And it's something we talk about a lot for CNCF projects. Um, but we tend to talk about it in the context of uh, sustain, sustaining contributions, which is the next metrics model in your list in the agenda. Um, because fatigue is something that I'm not sure, I'm not sure that you can really really measure it, but you can measure the sustainability of, of contributions over time and whether, you, whether there's an indication that the project will be able to sustain itself, which is sort of the positive side, like community fatigue is like everyone's exhausted and burnt out and can we continue this project? Sustaining contributions is sort of the positive side of it. So I, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not sure that I like this and I'm not sure that we can measure that we can measure fatigue in a meaningful way, but we I feel like we can measure community sustainability or sustaining contributions. Gotcha, Gary. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask the question if fatigue is like meaningfully different from burnout, because I think that I'm seeing that there's sustainability of a project and then there's the community and the maintainers may be fatigued, right? Um, I think that burnout is, is basically the same thing as like whether or not the maintainers feel fatigue maintaining the project. Um, I, I'm seeing some maybes or something, but it, it feels like, uh, fatigue might be pretty similar to what we already measure with metrics. Actually, I'm also thinking how to measure the fatigue or burnout of some key contributors, except for someone tell us he he would like to leave this country uh, community or he's seeking for help for some support on some public channel. Uh, except for that, I, I don't know how to measure that. Uh, one of the way which is like not direct uh, uh, you to your question is indirect way uh, through mailing communication like or through mm -hmm. other communication channels you observe the cues 
and there are some sentiment analysis which uh, have help you point out those things but it's not you know directly observable that oh here is the metric you can directly measure it but Actually, you make me thinking that a large language model to be yes. able to <laughs> yes. sensitively to say, okay, uh, what what's the basic sense of your context saying? Yes, yes. Even if you even just look at the grammarly uh, that we use in the word document, it gives you the feeling of emotions like anger or you know something like along those lines. So if you look at the text within the uh, repositories. Through language learning models, you can analyze maybe fatigue or maybe some tone analysis, some kind of those things. Actually, I'm trying to do so, but not not specific for the for now. This this emotion, I I only um, currently focus on the positive or negative or no or neutral uh, emotion for some post comments. So except for that, like this born out uh, emotion, I, I have to try, try this. So maybe an idea for you to try that out. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult, I think, because it's kind of difficult to to, to find out such such a word to show how burned out he is or she is. Just as a note, we do have the project burnout metric. And I think to this conversation, like a lot of a lot of the data is collected through surveys or interviews by just simply reaching out to folks and asking how they're doing within the project. Mm -hmm. um, Don, to your point then of sustaining contributors. just give you a second to take a look at this is it about it i don't think it's only about newcomers at least listening to the way you were talking and long-term community members but both yeah i mean i think i think it's a piece of it like step one is are you welcoming to newcomers so that they want to join your project and then are they are they sticking around and are they continuing to make contributions over time okay do you, could you comment on how the CNCF is thinking about this in terms of trying to understand that? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a hard thing to, uh, to understand. And I don't know that we've really taken so much of a metrics based approach to it. Okay. Um, Does anybody yeah. have thoughts on what the metrics might be that might provide again just like getting us off zero that might provide some insight as into our ability to sustain contributors do we have a metric around the maturity of the community, like how long people have been in the community or something like that. I don't think we do no. that. Like if we have a good base of folks that have been in the community a long time, that might be a good indicator to, mm -hmm, to the level that which you can sustain contributions. Cause you know what I mean? If they're all new, then that might be harder for your community to sustain contributions just cause there's a steep learning curve, but but I don't know that we have a metric that really measures the length of time of people in the community. Yeah, I'm not sure if we've defined a metric, but um, Groomer Lab certainly has an implementation that looks at um, occasional contributors, regular contributors, and core contributors. Um, and and that that is something that that I tend to think about when I think about sustaining contributions. Is is you know do you have because you should have like a bunch of occasional contributors because that's just the way projects work. And then, you know, a decent set of regular contributors and then a smaller set of core contributors. But what, um, and and you can look at trends in those, right? So if your core contributors is declining um, and not your regular contributors is not increasing, then you're going to have a problem at some point, right? I 
kind of like that done, like trying to understand the balance between these core, regular, and first time. Okay. No, I, you're right, Elizabeth. I don't think we have any metric about that or either of these, to be honest with you. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm actually thinking uh, all those um, metrics model relate to this just mentioned by Don, this regular and core and or 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 euro euro uh, contributors. I would like to make thing as um, and as kind of big metrics model, call it contributor metrics model, but uh, divided into the different uh, sub metrics model. But uh, um, maybe in the next meeting, I would like to show that with with you. Yeah, and it might something. be interesting, Yuhui, to talk to somebody on the Grimoire Lab team and see how they're doing this already and see if we can get some um, insights into, into how they've done it so far. Yeah. This idea actually coming from the Joe Bacon's this book. They divided the contributors as uh, Cairo, regular and co-contributors, and they actually used uh, reference the similar concept for that. It's concepts we've been talking about for a long time, so I don't think it was it was new in Jono's book. I think he described it in in his book, um, but I think it's uh, something that people have been talking about in open source communities for a really long time. The book name should called "People Powered." I, I yeah. don't quite remember correctly. <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, what are your what are people's thoughts? Should we kind of take these two metrics models and just set them aside for a little bit longer while we think through. I'm talking about fatigue and sustaining contributors. And then maybe Yahui, you had mentioned in a couple of weeks, you could maybe bring some thoughts around this. Yeah, so, I only have one comment for, for the current, uh, this, this certain contributors. Uh, look at the metrics mentioned in this, this metrics model. It's, um, it's at least a lot more um, metrics actually. This one? Uh, no, the su sustaining. Not, not this, not this, this one. Okay, maybe the other one. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if, uh, yeah, this one. Okay. It's mentioned a lot of. And there are a number of different contrib contributor metrics. I'm just thinking from the deployment view, so how to implement this metrics model in Compass, <laughs> because there are so many metrics. But we are not satisfied with all the list of metrics because they're not uh, exactly connect to the fatigue that we are trying to assess. Like. Project popularity, how it tells us whether a contributor is fatigue or, or the community is fatigue or not. Yeah, okay. Would anybody I like to... this one needs to be this one needs to be rewritten, the fatigue one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or mm -hmm. or scrapped yeah. and rolled yep. Yep. some of the concepts rolled into the sustaining one. Would anybody thank you? Would anybody like to try to do that? like bring these together maybe before the next meeting it wouldn't even have to be in a metric model just some a way for us to talk about the sustaining contributors idea and i think there's a couple yeah, I, of ideas here i can yeah i can give some 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 introduction about my my, my thoughts yeah in the next meeting yeah 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 maybe maybe before the meeting i can i can and provide the talk for the reference. That sounds good. Well, I like the idea too that whoever said it may be part of a larger contributor understanding and like sustaining is one of the things that we care about. And there may be other questions. And to, that would, I think that brings to your point, Don, like what is Grimoire Lab doing around contributors and how are they thinking about contributors? Okay. Okay.
Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have one more and we're running out of time. Um, code health review, who put that one in there? Oh, sorry. I added that um, just because I, I just wanted to mention it that it was something that we kind of talked about in the common working group because uh, Ray Paik was looking at um, a metric that he was kind of thinking as code review health, but it was really looking to measure how many um, pull requests get merged without a review by somebody else. So like a self merge of pull requests with no reviews from someone else. And that got me thinking that there's probably um, a whole set of code review health metrics that we might want to put into a metrics model. So, so this isn't something that we have a draft of. We don't necessarily have the metrics we need for it yet. Um, although I suspect that some of the metrics that we might want to use for it are probably already defined in, in one of the other working groups, like possibly risk or value. Okay. Um, in evolution, most of the code review kind of a thing is in the evolution working group. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But I just want to bring it up so people could start thinking about it. Um, but I, I don't think we're ready to work on it yet. I think I'd like to see Ray's metric developed first. And I think he is doing that. He is, yeah. He, he put a link to a doc in, in the uh, Slack channel. Okay, right on. Um, okay, thanks for bringing that up, Don. Um, let's see, I did want to, I'm going to, jump real quickly to the GitHub action issue we had from last time. Yuhui, you had brought this up. Remember, like if there's a change in a particular, it was this, this open question. If there's uh -huh. a, a particular markdown file, can we use GitHub actions to open an issue in a different repository within a different org? And it looks like the answer is yes. So Venu, uh -huh. I put it in the general channel, the question just yesterday, and then they posted a potential solution to be able to do that. And so I'm going to, I said, yeah, to him, if he's willing to help out to give that a go. So I'm, Venu's been a longtime contributor with the chaos project and um, I, he's really done great work over the years. So I'd like to see what he comes up with and, um, but it sounds like there, there's probably a solution here. Okay, great. That's yeah, great. yeah. Feel free to join that conversation too, Yuhui. Again, it's just in general. Just put it in the general chat channel. Okay. Um, let's see. Before we head out, there was I know there was some work, Yuhui, that you were doing on just kind of on the metric spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Did you have any update on this as to what you were doing here? Actually, I I made a, a survey in Compass Lab to 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 check what kind of metrics you want to deploy or implement as a component in the lab first. Uh, I post the survey uh, on the uh, OSS Compass. Uh, unfortunately, it's only uh, in Chinese. So maybe in the future, I can I can keep updating the survey. Maybe through the survey monkey or monkey survey, I can't I can't quite remember that name, but in English, to check uh, uh, which one is the implement first. But I, I anyway, in the same time, we actually start the the implementation about this metrics model as comments from from the last uh, meeting, as you and uh, and uh, Shen mentioned, we would like to implement metrics related to the uh, issue and the pull request first because this there's um, um these metrics are more uh, have more provide more direct right value for the people so i would like to implement them first and maybe in, in the next week in the next meeting if we have more time uh i would like to show some demos on these thinkings yeah, we can certainly do that. I just I, I needed to get through those models today, but yeah, we can definitely go back to taking a look at at that. So, with respect to this, like, is this something that you're hoping that we can track, like myself, 
or is this yeah you can you can do that i i can i would like to to say what's the result okay so as an example like on this tab pr time to first response i guess i'm just trying to understand the workflow that you want to see here in this tab oh by the way i can tell you one more thing if you look at um, a, a top right corner we have support the login function uh if you uh yeah sign in uh, you can sign with the github or Getty account and uh, you can use this login function to to subscribe the uh, project uh, uh, which would like uh, would uh, have some update analysis report and uh, here will uh, this will notifies you with email or slack channel okay that's nice um all right we we are at time you can i I'm going to send you some notes, at least in the metric model channel. I, I think I, I'm not quite clear on this tab what actions you want me to do or you would uh, like. You can choose because there's two or three selections or um, choices. You can pick any of them if you think which is um, pro, uh, high priorities or, or lower priorities. And then we can, based on this uh, survey, we will would he implement those high priority metrics firstly I gotcha. as a component, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, oh, that's helpful, thank you. Um, but last thing, before we head out, there was a, in the chat, there's a chat GPT question open, which is, is the Kubernetes community fatigued? <laughs> we, we wanna know the answer to this. So has anybody? <laughs> Chat GPT said, sorry, is your uh, chat GPT is not updated on that. Oh, that's, uh, oh hold on. I, I have barred. Give me one second. I'll ask. <laughs> so, I, have, I, I already have the response. Let me paste the response in the chat. Maybe, yes. <laughs> Here is a response uh, from the chat GPT. Rather than this, I ask uh, what, uh, how we measure the fatigue of an open source contributor and I got a like interesting response from chat GPT. Very okay. <laughs> I mean it's not wrong. Like that's actually <laughs> so uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Chat GPT has provided five uh, different metrics that we can look into to measure the fatigueness of an open source contributor that we can think through in the next session. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> into the new world we go. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank and really, you. thank you again for helping me through these metrics models. I think it's really important for us to continue to push these forward. Yeah. All right. Till next time. Take care, everybody. Okay. Bye.